Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This video is part of the Spring Data Fundamentals series. In this video, we enhance the Greeting Web Services project, integrating it with MySQL. Learn to configure connections, initialize the database structure and data, and tune the connection pool. Let's get started. I've opened a terminal window, and I'll use the MySQL command line interface to connect as an administrator. First, let's create a database for the Greeting Web Services application. Let's name it Greeting. Next, create a MySQL account which will be used by the application to connect to the database. This account is granted all privileges on the new Greeting database. Notice the word local host in the SQL statements. The host name which follows the at symbol is used to restrict the host or IP address from which connections may originate. You should always create a named account dedicated to the application. Never use an account which is also used by people to access the database. By using a dedicated account for application access, it will simplify troubleshooting problems later and it allows the database resource limits to be tuned for the application account. Next, let's open the Spring Tool Suite, or STS. Go to the Greeting Web Services project and open the pom.xml file. Let's add a new dependency for the MySQL database driver. Notice that the version element is omitted. Since the project POM declares the Spring Boot Starter as the parent POM, the MySQL driver dependency version is provided by the Spring Boot Bill of Materials. If you have watched the previous episodes in this series, you know that the HyperSQL database configuration is located in a profile-specific properties file. Let's create another properties file to configure the application for MySQL. In STS, navigate to the source main resources config directory and create a new file in that directory named application-mysql.properties. Within the new file, add the MySQL database connection configuration. These properties configure the driver class, the URL, and credentials for the MySQL data source. Thus far, we have created the database and configured the application to connect to it. We need to initialize the database with a schema structure and some seed data. In STS, navigate to the source main resources data directory. Within the HSQLDB subdirectory, the project contains files named schema.sql and data.sql, which initialize the in-memory HyperSQL database. The schema.sql file contains statements to create the schema structure. The data.sql file contains statements to insert seed or initialization data into those structures. Let's create similar files for MySQL. Begin by creating a new subdirectory named MySQL, and within that subdirectory let's copy the schema and data SQL files from the HSQLDB directory. The SQL syntax for MySQL is a bit different from that used by HyperSQL. Database objects such as table, column, and constraint names should be enclosed in backticks. Some of the data definition SQL syntax is slightly different as well. I'm going to paste in the revised contents of the schema.sql file. Remember the full file is available on GitHub at the repository URL located in this episode's description. Fortunately, the insert statements in the data.sql file do not require any changes to work with MySQL. It does not need to be changed.
We must tell Spring that we want the application to initialize the database for us and where to find the initialization scripts that we just created. Return to the application MySQL properties file. Just as we've done for the HyperSQL profile configuration, we need to add the Spring data source schema and Spring data source data property keys. These properties use the class path prefix, which instructs Spring's resource loader to search the class path for these files. In a Spring Boot application, the class path root is located at the source main resources directory. Therefore, the class path resource loader expects to find these files in a project directory located at the path source main resources data MySQL. Let's add a final piece of configuration to the application MySQL properties file. When Spring Boot starts and creates a data source, additional properties may be declared to configure the connection pool. The first set of properties configures the connection pool size. In this case, the application will start with 10 pooled connections. The maximum number of connections in the pool is 50. Next, the minimum and maximum number of idle connections is defined. The test on borrow property tells Spring to validate the health of the connection using the validation query when the application borrows a connection from the pool. Finally, the time between eviction runs and the minimum evictable idle time properties govern the behavior of the connection pool idle scanner. In this case, the scanner runs every 60 seconds and evicts connections from the pool which have been idle for at least 5 minutes. Let's run the application to see these changes in action. First, I need to enable the MySQL Spring Profile, and the easiest way to do this on my local machine is to set the Spring Profile's active property in the main application.properties file. Next, I'll open a terminal window and change the directory to the project-based directory. Type mvn spring boot colon run and press enter to start the embedded Apache Tomcat web server on port 8080. The application loads using the MySQL profile. Next, I'll use the Postman RESTful web service client to test the application. I'll fetch all the greetings and notice that the response contains the two greetings which are in the seed data script. Next I'll begin to execute each of the greeting web service endpoints that we've used in previous videos in this series. This demonstrates that the application functionality is integrated seamlessly with the MySQL database each of the endpoints is behaving exactly as we've seen it behave before in previous episodes. Finally, I'll open the MySQL Workbench tool and show the rows in the greeting table. Integrating a Spring Boot application with MySQL is relatively simple. As is often the case, Spring Boot performs all the heavy lifting for us. This episode illustrates how the enterprise features of Spring Boot data source management, such as data source initialization and connection pool resource management, are externalized to a configuration file. 
Furthermore, we can easily switch between JPA data database engines by simply switching spring profiles, making it easy to use an in-memory database for continuous integration, local testing, or even demonstration environments, but switch to a persistent database for production environments. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the LeanStacks YouTube channel and follow the LeanStacks Google Plus page to receive updates as new videos are published. As always, you can find more information on LeanStacks.com. To view the complete repository illustrated in this video, see the GitHub repository URL in this video's description.